let's get started. We want to welcome all our first time guests, all our online viewers. We love you. We thank God for each and every one of you. I give an honor to Pastor Huey. Uh, and giving honor to God who's the head of my life, Pastor Huey, who is my pastor, and all our respected people and elders that's here today. My lovely wife, especially. Amen. I love her of 18 years. We've been together. Amen. And uh, we are happily married. Praise God. All right. So I want to prepare you for this message. It really blew me away as the Lord was beginning to. You know, I had, you know, as I prepare messages, I start out with different ideas and things just floating. I see problems in the world. I say, Lord, where is it in your word that we can fix this? How can we adjust the people's heart? Lord, I care about people. Lord, I pray that, you know, give me the answers. Give me the, give me the wisdom to, be, to convey what you're trying to say in this house during this season. And so um, he gave me this message, and I believe it's, it's pertinent for today and coincide with these uh, testimonies. Amen. So let's go to John chapter 16, verses 7 through 11, the King James Version. John chapter 16, verses 7 through 11, the King James Version. Jesus is speaking and he says, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I, if, uh, for if I go not away, the comforter, say comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judge. Let us pray. Father God, I pray for the hearts of your pre people. I pray it be open to truth. I, I pray, Lord God, that you reveal the lies of the enemy in people's life, Lord God, that they may, they may see, Lord, clearly what you're saying, how you're operating in this season. Lord God, I pray that we, from this message and from your truth, that we'll be able to discern, rightly divide the choices between good and evil. Lord God, what we choose to believe and what we choose not to believe. Lord, help us in our belief. Lord, teach us. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, teach me, Lord, teach me. How, to believe. how to believe. Lord, teach me, Lord, teach me. How, to how to believe. All right. Human beings have the, have the ability to believe. Amen. The ability to believe um, God has equipped human beings with is, 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 is powerful. Amen. Jesus said all things are possible to those who believe. Our ability to believe is, it what, is what gives us the greatest accomplishments as human beings. Amen. Everything we see that's good, it, it, it comes from God. Amen. Everything good, good and perfect gift come from God. But it came out of the human being able to believe in something. All right. Before it even existed. Right. And so even the greatest evils comes out of the heart of the, the human being able to believe whether good or bad. Right. And so the results of this world is the results of human beings believing in something. Whether the devil or God, whether truth or lies, whether right or wrong, it don't matter. If you believe it, it's truth to you. Amen. That's the power of belief. Right. And, and as we go through this, you will see how the enemy has hijacked our belief system. When Jesus said all things are possible to those who would believe in, believe, he was encouraging people to believe in God to do the impossible if we only what believe. God and Satan is after the same thing. And if believing gets you the impossible with God, it's not hard to imagine if believing in a lie, what what is the results of believing in a lie? It's not hard to imagine. Just look at your timeline. Look at the news. Amen. It's not the result of God. It's not the result of believing in the truth. To further bring out the understanding of the power of believing, the title of this message is the nocebo effect. It's so good, guys. Y'all hang on with me. It is entitled the nocebo effect. Come on, Nate. 
I want you all to take this journey with me as we go through our own clinical trial. And guess what my name is? Come on. Dr. Jasper. Nate will be passing out. Nate, give me, give me something good. Come on. Dr. Boy. He almost made me say something. Yes, he almost made me say something. Uh, my name is Dr. Jasper, okay? Dr. J for short. Uh, doc, let me just, I thought I was trying to pull on a nickname from y'all, and y'all, you hurt me. All right. So we are going to play, play our own clinical trial. Nate, Pastor Nate, uh, he is a pastor, but pa Nate is passing out um, candy, but I am going to explain to you what it represents. In every clinical trial, the reason there is a clinical trial, pharmaceutical companies have to test their drugs, all right? And they have to test them. All right, they have to, the reason they test them is to see how effective they are against the placebo. Every trial, every clinical trial, everyone in the clinical trial is giving what is known to be as an experimental drug, right? And just say, for instance, that y'all all are suffering from depression. This is for instance. We know that there's praise for the spirit of heaviness, amen? But if you are suffering from depression, there is an answer in Jesus. But this is a real thing with people who don't have the answer in Jesus, right? And so in this clinical trial, you are, for instance, are all suffering from depression. In hopes of this new found drug will help you to relieve you of your depression, your sadness. All right? And in the clinical trial, everyone is given this drug. But half the people are given a placebo. Why is that? A placebo is none other than a sugar pill. It has no medicinal purposes at all. But... In giving this placebo, they are told that this will help them. And in every clinical trial, there are the good things that it is going to do for you, and there are the side effects. Say side effects. Side effects. So in, in spite of having side effects, people are taking a chance and taking this drug, hoping that it will rid them of the depression and maybe have one or two side effects. Right. And of course, we look at the commercials. I look at them just like you. And I'm like, man, the side effects is worse than having them. I'm like, my God, rectal bleeding and stuff like the world. <laughs> and so we are participating in a fictitious um, clinical trial. And I must bring out the power of the placebo effect. For us to understand the nocebo effect, we have to understand the placebo effect. Amen? Um, placebo, this is very, very powerful when I was studying this. The placebo, only 10% of medications pass the placebo effect. Only 10%. That means the people who receive the placebo... And they, and they believe it's going to help them. And it has no medical purpose, no medical, uh, um, nothing in it that can really change the chemistry of their body. Just them believing it can change and it can help them actually causes the change. And the medication is judged up against your ability to believe. When you take this medication, it will help you. 
That is called the placebo effect. You take a placebo, has no medication in it. You believe it has medication in it because the doctor says it's going to do this for you. And out of expectation, your body, people's body, change without medication. And this is what happens in clinical trials. Every medication. Only 10% of the medications on the market beat the placebo. 90% of them fail. And it amazed me. I said, why haven't we tapped into this? Why haven't we captured this power we have on the inside of us so it may benefit human beings? But guess what? <laughs> it's hard. To, it's hard. It's hard. You can't make no money off of it. If they can't make money off of it, they're not investing in researching it. Lord, say, Lord, help me. So the placebo is none other than a sugar pill that looked like the medication that they said that they're given, but you don't know until the end of the trial that you've been given a placebo. And they ask you, how was your 28 days? Man, I tell you, I felt good the whole time. This stuff worked, and you took a placebo. The people taking placebos. And that is called the placebo effect. When you believe in a positive outcome, just because it was told to you, Lord, you got to help me. You got to help me. Let's look at some case studies. There once was a man named Mr. We call him Mr. Cucumber. Say Mr. Cucumber. He was in a clinical trial, and he was taking antidepressant medication and, um, and received a prescription bottle for every day of that month. The next morning, out of anxiety, he took all 28 pills at once. Realizing he made a mistake, he called his neighbor to come and take him to the hospital. When he got to the hospital, he told the doctors, he says, I've taken all my medication, and he collapsed on the floor. The, pres the prescription bottle fell from his pocket, and the bottle confirmed that he was a part of a clinical trial. But what, it wasn't labeled whether the medication was a placebo or was it the experimental uh, drug. Amen. And so, Mr. Cucumber, blood pressure um, became dangerously low, 80 over 40. His heart rate dangerously high at 110. His breathing fast and sporadic. And around the time, uh, and around that time, after four hours, around that time, the head of the clinical, um, uh, the, um, the clinical trial came in and noticed that Mr. Cucumber had taken the placebos. They didn't know if it was the medication or the placebo. So he hadn't overdosed on drugs. He overdosed on fear. On fear. The negative aspect of the clinical trial, the negative aspect of, because you got people who go into these clinical trials and they believe more in, not in the positive outcome. Placebo is the positive outcome of the clinical trial. A nocebo is the negative outcome of a clinical trial. That, mean, that means when you take the placebo, the negative effects of that pill, of what the doctor said would happen, would be the side effects. A nocebo is believing in the negative effects of a placebo. Say, Lord, help me, Jesus. So this guy, he didn't overdose on drugs, he overdosed on fear. And after about 15 minutes of knowing that he just took the placebo, 15 minutes is all it took for everything to become, become that normal, and he was able to go home. It was the expecting something bad to happen that caused the reaction in his body. Most people 
go through this and they experience the nocebo effect from the placebo and drop out because it's just too much. It's too real to them. Or they just start experiencing the negative effects of the placebo. So nocebo actually is good for us. There is a purpose in why our bodies respond in a negative way. A lot of times nocebo is tied to fight or flight. Fight or flight is a, is a mode we get in when we see and expect danger. Amen. The thing about fight or flight, though, is it can be um, it can begin in us whether it's imagined or if it's real. Our imagination and I, I imagine if something hit our imagination and we believe that it's negative for us. Then it's going to be never it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? If you believe something bad will happen, then it will. Why? Because you're actually expecting it to. You'll look for any little thing to cause, right? Because your expectation in it actually causes you to see it more and to be so aware of it more that you actually, it takes place, right? But my issue with all of this, right? Why are we so moved by what seemed to be such a little thing? It's just words. All I've done as the doctor of the clinical trial is just said what could happen, right? And it caused the expectation in those who are in that clinical trial to expect just what I said. It's amazing how we believe, how, what, once we believe something, it leads to trust. Whether it's God or the devil, whether it's good or bad, that's the danger of and the power of believing. Because once you believe, you begin to trust. It, it, it's just normal to just lean over and begin to trust, right? So sticks and stones may break my bones. Words would never hurt me, just change the whole game, right? Words are so powerful. They are so powerful. So I, 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 let's go to some of these case studies. I was so blown away at just the outcome of these studies, right? It was one case study where he had, um, it was a burn victim. Um, and actually, and, and what, what happened was he was in the uh, hospital room with other burn victims. And everybody was being fed a certain amount of morphine every day. And once you used up that amount, it's over. You, you ain't getting no more. So what happened was he used up his amount and he begged the, he begged the um, nurse. He said, nurse, I need some more. I need some more pain medication. And the nurse says, uh, there is no more. You have to wait till tomorrow. And he said, what about him? He's getting way more medication than I am. And, and the nurse told him, oh, that's just saline. He thinks he's getting more Another clinical trial, another trial of things. It was a, um, it was a, they was testing this theory of tasting. And they had two beers. And they was given one beer that looks like it was more fancy than the other. But it was the same beer. Only thing they difference, they put, they put, uh, they put, um, balsamic vinegar in one of them, right? And so they didn't tell them, but they put the flashy little label on it, and um, they drunk both beers, and 100% of the time, they, the one with the balsamic vinegar in the beer was the one they chose that tasted the best. But the crazy part about it is, once they was told the only reason and the only difference in the taste of the beer was because of the vinegar, <laughs> that's when they was blown away. But I'm bringing out these aspects of how the human body works because if you have the enemy knows about our ability to believe, don't you know how he can, how he can manipulate 
Oh, Jesus. How he can play with. And, and then they had one trial where, um, where if the doctor had his, um, they, what, they, had, they had two doctors come in, right? And if the doctor seemed nice and clean cut and everything neat, people believed the doctor very easily. But if the doctor came in, and even how the doctor even gave, gave the diagnosis, right, affected how a person accepted the information. So if a doctor came in all smooth talking, how are you? Where are you from? Oh, really? What you like about that? How were your mama? How she's doing? And that smooth, and he shows interest in them, they accepted that information a whole lot better than a doctor came in. What's up? How are you? You know? Yeah. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Hey, if a doctor say he know what he's doing and coming in and brag, I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, hold on, no. Nah. Why you got to tell me that so many times? Like, you know, I'm from the streets, right? Anytime a mechanic say, I know what I'm doing, I'm like, yeah, you're a mechanic, bro. You're supposed to know what you Why you got to tell me this? Why you trying to convince me? Why you selling me, bro? Hey, why you selling me? <laughs> Let me get back on track. So the doc, even, even studies were shown that even if, and I was reading, how many of y'all look at these crazy videos on YouTube? Sometimes, I don't know why I look at these videos, but I like them. So one doctor called the pimple popper. Y'all know the pimple popper? Yeah. Okay, the pimple popper. So one time, the, she, she fixing folks, right? Like, she really helping people, right? But it was some cases she couldn't help. So one case was, it was a lady who had just scratch marks all the way to the, all the, way to the tender uh, tissue, all over her body, right? And it was, and she been scratching. She said, something is causing me to scratch, right? And, and, sh and, and, and then um, Pimple Popper, she said, I can't, I can't help you. And I, said, I, and I said, why you can't help her? You done been busting stuff, taking stuff out, slicing stuff up. I said, why you can't help this lady? She got, it's like she had um, legions on her face and on her, I mean, just, it looked like old um, wounds that hasn't healed all the way. And she keep ripping the scab off, right? And, it, and she won't let it heal. I'm sorry if I'm being too graphic, but so she said, I need you to not touch your skin. She said, and this is what she said. She said, it's in your head. And the lady, the, the, the patient, she said, I don't believe you. Right. And it was another lady. She did like she said, I think you're lying. It ain't in my head. Something is on me. Right. Something is. I feel this. Right. And so I was listening, and then I, I, I was looking at another clinical trial where they had, um, they had cream on the same problem that Pimple Pop couldn't, she just said, it's in your head. But the doctor told her, this cream will help you. And the cream had no medication in it. And the touching of the cream on the skin stopped the skin from being irritated. Just because... They believed. Lord, you got to help me. Lord, you got to help. Why, why don't we know more testimonies of this, right? When I, I said, this can't be true. I got to be. I'm not this smart. Guys, come on. Like, this can't be true. And I'm not saying that every case is like this, but these possibilities are real. These are real test studies. So how does this affect our faith? How does this affect how we believe? How is life presenting words? Guys, I, I didn't even say nothing deep. It's words from those who appear to know and we respect to know, right? And I said, Lord, how can this, how is this affecting our faith? Or 
Our ability to believe was intended for us to accept the words that came from Jesus' lips as easy as it is that we take these doctors and his advice. And I'm not saying don't take the doctor's advice. Amen. Please don't hear that. But all I'm saying is, do we believe in Jesus' words as easy and as receptive as or even equal to those we respect just because? Right? And I thank God for doctors. And this is no way in really putting them down. So the placebo effect and the nocebo effect. The biblical terms is thinking the best and thinking the worst. But there's a purpose in thinking the best and in thinking the worst. Right? I don't think we should get lopsided in that. Jesus said, uh, the, uh, love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It's ever ready to believe the best of every person. His hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. And it does everything without weakening. All right? So believe in the worst or believe in, in the reality. I was looking at another video. Here we go. And um, I, I was looking at this active, um, active protection services uh, YouTube channel. And it's real life videos of real life scenarios of people getting into these gun scenarios where you are in actual real danger, right? And I was looking at this, it was in the neighborhood, they were shoveling in snow, and it was a neighbors, they was out there arguing. And it was a husband and wife, neighbor, they was, they was uh, talking with their neighbor right across the street, and they out there jawing, right? Ah, yeah, 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 ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the neighbor, that they was talking to, the husband and wife, went into the house, right? And he, he said, yeah, go in the house, you know, the, the, the husband and the wife. And they were sitting there jawing, right, with their shovels and stuff. And, and then he came out, right? He said, you, you really want me to go in the house? Like he started talking from the porch. And he said, come out here, come out here, oh, come out here, right? And they was bold and they was, they was just acting like they was ready to do something to him, right? He came out, came out, right? And he shot at least five times. At least five times. Didn't hit no one. And they still sitting there like, rah, rah, ah, rah, 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 rah. And then finally one hit the husband, right? And he said, oh. And, I, and, I, and, 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 and Jesus, it really blew me away at the both sides. He killed them right there in the middle of the street, went in the house and killed himself, right? And I was so shocked. But, I was, but, I, but it gave me a revelation. This revelation you got. When you need to run, ain't no sitting there talking about believing the best. You better believe the worst and get your butt up out of there. <laughs> While you sitting there and you jawing, this dude that shot at you five times and you still jawing. And I said, how, Lord? What in the world is going on? And I, it, it blew me away at the reality of how just a street argument barring can really end deadly. You know, it can really, the sober of most of the reality of nocebo is this. When you need to run, when it's real danger, you don't need to act like everything is okay. Right. Ain't no more believing the best when you're shooting at me. Oh, he all right. He going to be all right. Don't be out of control, but. You better go somewhere. Now, I brought out this because we have the power to believe, right? Those, those people was foolish to me. They, they, they just foolish. But being so caught up in and believing that this wasn't a dangerous situation was straight up foolish. All right? And I think we get caught up as believers or people, period. We trust and we believe at the wrong time. We believe the best when we need to take it serious. And we believe the worst when we need to believe the best. So in John chapter 16, thank you, thank you. So in John chapter 16, um, and I, let me break that on down even further. 
And I think we do this in a lot of many different ways. And I think it's unhealthy at times. I'm looking at another, I'm looking at another, another show, right? And it's called, uh, what's it called? Catfish. How many of y'all heard that, that, that show called Catfish? And I have troubles with it because I'm, I'm like, okay, you fall in love with somebody on the internet, right? And I'm not saying that love ain't out there, right? But when we need to believe the worst, you know, I had to counsel a couple of single ladies coming to me. And they say, you know what, Pastor, I'm about to move to Nigeria. <laughs> and I said, I said, hold on. And none of y'all, none of the ladies in here, so y'all don't get thinking. So I said, um, I said, um, so I said, what? You finna, <laughs> you finna go back to the whole land, you know? And she was like, oh, yeah, I just met my husband, you know. I said, you met your husband. Where? Where? Where is he at? I want to meet him. Where is he at? Oh, he, he, he you know, he on Facebook, he on Messenger. I said, Messenger? I said, okay. And I said, and then, you know, and then she said, um, you know, I need $200 so I can send for his ticket so, um, so he can come over here and meet my family, then we're going to go back. And then I said, um. And I said, Lord, what's going on with the world? And then, I, and then I'm like, um, I'm trying to be nice and I'm trying to, I don't want to, because we, we desire to be loved, guys, yeah. right? Everyone desires to be loved. So I'm not trying to be insensitive, but our wanting and desire to be loved will cause us to believe the best when we need to really believe the worst. We really believe, we need to believe that, and when I look at this show, Catfish, and I'm like, these people, this person really is in love with this person, right? They are, oh, I can't wait to see them, and oh, they really, I love them, and man, they the world to me. I've been saving myself, and, and you know, and then when, they, when the person come out and it's revealed, they're they nothing like their picture. They are told sometimes another uh, gender, you know, it just, and, and I said, what causes a person to easily believe to be getting in love with someone on the internet? And I'm just bringing out the emphasis of the power of words. It ain't even nobody's there, right? It's just words. It's an interaction between two human beings, yes? That is the case. But the power of words, when we believe them, will cause us to trust. When we either don't need to or when we do need to. The power of believing will cause you to reject somebody you need to accept. And it'll cause you to, it'll cause you to accept somebody you need to reject. Right? So, I see this at work. And, you know, I'm just not getting it myself because Jesus started his message off with just placebo. I said, Lord, let's talk about outreach. Let's go to out. We're about to outreach. We're about to outreach. Lord, we're about to hit this neighborhood. Let's, let's hit it. And the Lord just, I just, and then when I wrote down placebo, I just couldn't stop writing. I said, okay, Lord. So, the power of believing, the enemy wants to take advantage of that power because he has no power. He's a perverter of everything. He don't, he's not the creator of anything. He takes what God has created and turns it and twists it into, into a purpose that God never intended for it to be, Right? And God never intended for a lot of the things that we do in life, in the world, God never, that was never was his true intentions for him, mankind, right? A lot of things that we do and we pass into law and everybody accepted as all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God says, you know what? I never created that for you. What causes us to hurrah and get on the bandwagon of all these things? It's the power of believing that something is true to you, whether if it don't matter what God say. If when you believe it is when you believe something from your heart and it's true to you, anyone that's telling you otherwise, it's very difficult for you to reverse that train unless you repent. And when you repent, you come across you you recognize the error of your way and the momentum and the trajectory that you're headed in. Is it the way God intended? These been your choices. These been this been your life. This is what you decided. This it had nothing to do with what God wanted. And you repent of that and say, Lord, I recognize that this train wreck is because of me, God. And so now I choose to, to put the halt and the brakes on this, on this locomotive. And I choose to 
now yield to you and what you want, God, and what's your desires for my life, and who do you want me to talk to, and what church do you want me to go to, God, and how do you want me to spend my money, God, and how do you want me to handle this emotional self, God? Teach me, Lord Jesus, how, how to allow you to be Lord over my emotional self, how to allow you to be Lord over my life, God. Teach me, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord God, to show me how to be now. Lord, I've been doing what I wanted long enough. I'm a new creature in Christ in the old things. Lord, help me how to keep it old. Help me to keep that stuff in the, in the past, in the past, Lord God. Give me new instructions, God. Give me new ways to go, Lord Jesus. I need a new attitude. I need a new move. Lord God, I need you, God. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you, God. I don't want to be, Lord God, believing in a lie. I don't want to give my truth. I don't want to give my trust over to a lie. And so I submit to you. Allow Jesus to be Lord over how you believe. Allow Jesus to be Lord over what you believe. Amen. So then, you know, just it's just what I say. Lord, teach me how to believe. Teach me what to believe in. Because you're the only one no truth. Amen. Amen. In closing. Come on, Marcus. John chapter 16, in closing. Thank you. Have you ever wondered why God doesn't blame the devil? Have you ever wondered why God doesn't blame the devil for the outcome of this world? The enemy has taken control of this world legally. And he did it through deception. He did it through, this is so good. All temptation have a hope wrapped around it that something in this is good for me. This is so good. It wouldn't be a temptation if it wasn't appetizing. It wouldn't be a temptation if you didn't have a benefit or assume benefit that will come out of it. I've thought about the power of and I love you. The power of that phrase, I love you. And I've seen and recognized I have my desires to be loved, right? And I only, and I realize that that desires, you know, my wife can only do so much. Y'all can only do so much, right? But God has to be found out that they, he has to be what fulfills me in my love tank. People can only do so much. Right? But the enemy has used that phrase, I love you. To get us to trust and believe someone who didn't really love us, right? Why? Because we desire to be loved. God created us to be loved. God created us. And I can talk to anybody in the whole world, don't mention Jesus, and talk about love and then get to what they need to. Because everybody needs love. Jesus said when he comes, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He will expose the godless worldview of sin. 
This is a message Bible. He will expose the godless worldview of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He will show them that their refusal to believe in me is their basic sin. Jesus said, actually John said in, in 1 John 3 verse 23, this is his commandment that we believe on the name of his son. God, Jesus said all things are possible to those who believe. The power of you believing, the ability for you to believe was meant for Jesus. And mankind has chosen to believe something else other than God. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie. This is why they pass some laws and stuff that we don't agree with. They believe in something else. And I want to encourage you from God himself to hold on to what you believe. The sin of not believing in Jesus and trusting him and what he said is their basic sin. The lusting, the lying, the cheating, the stealing, the everything that you see is just the fruit of sin. All these things exist because people have chosen not to believe in Jesus. They came to Jesus and asked him, what must we do to work the works of God? Jesus said, believe on the one who he has sent. Say, Lord, teach me how to believe. Father, when we speak these words over to you, over you, this is what the Father says. Haven't I told you all things are possible to those who believe? Stop looking outside of yourself to discover yourself. Haven't I told you that you can do all things through me? Because of me. You are mighty in me, says the Lord. I've made you powerful in me. Keep fighting, says the Lord, to cast down the excuses, cast down the reasons. Cast down the arguments that sets himself up against me in your mind. Keep fighting, says the Lord. Accept my words above all else. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we come to you right now, God, believing. And some of us, Lord, we don't know how to believe past just saying it. Some of us, Lord, want to believe, but just don't know how. And so I choose to cry out, Lord. I believe, but help my unbelief, God. That's good, Lord. That's good. That's good. Thank you, Lord. You was given a peppermint earlier in the message. I want you to grab that. If you already ate it, praise God. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to do this until now. And the Lord says, that's what I believe he's saying. In our, clinical, in our fictitious clinical trial, this represents an actual experimental drug that will 
actually help change the chemistry of your body. The Bible talks about how his word is like nourishment to us. His word is like medication to us that we take. And every day, if he gives us new mercy, then he has a new word. So now this, what represent an experimental drug represent your daily dose of his word. And it works best when you ingest and when you take it. Your Bible sitting on the bookshelf will not do you any good. On your dash of your car won't do you any good. It has to go in your heart. The Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked. When the heart is not filled with God's word, you will be led astray. You will believe and can't help but to believe a lie. You can't help it. You can try hard. You can try to be in the middle of the road. I'm not going to church. I'm not there. I'm not here. I'm not a Christian. I'm spiritual. I'm, I'm just me. A line is being drawn in the sand and you got to pick a side. You got to pick a side. Thank you, Lord. The Lord needs, he wants his word to be in your heart. So that's you reading it, that's you hearing it, that's you singing it, that's your, it, you allowing God to influence how you believe. 